Right, we're here in the backyard with the 76. I've got a lot of bags, of course, in the back of the truck. So we'll show you how we sort of use them. These are the two jerry can bags, and they've been great, particularly when you're camping, you know, quick overnight stops. This is sort of a, uh, you know, a dirty gear bag or a rubbish bag, which is great. So that's our PVC jerry can bag. And this is the canvas jerry can bag. One of the big things I wanted to, you know, where I was looking at with the straps was how to tie these two down. Okay, and that's of course what we've come up with. Now what we had before that was just, and what a lot of people would use, is just a strap like this. So to tie something like this down, righto, what we had to do was come over the top like that and, you know, tie that down. And that works okay. Now the problem is always the excess. You've sort of got to try and tuck this away out of the road. You know, that's all right. But then when you want to open these bags up, you've got to pull all this out to, to get in them again. And that was a real pain. So, you know, I spent a few months trying to figure out what to do. And of course, the best uh, solution was the straps. Okay, so you can see how we've got on the side, you can see how I've got on the side just the loop. Okay, it's just an ideal thing for this sort of situation with the jerry can holders. Okay, so loop him on, and this is preset to the right length, there it is. So if you want to get in and out, you just clip it on and off, okay? This was the first strap we sort of worked out as why we need one, and uh, once from there we realised, right, now we need for the Max tracks, the Oz 10 and other bags. So, um, while we're here, we'll show you in the back of the truck. Now this is the sort of gear that I keep in the 76 all the time. Um, just on this side here, I've just got what's, which, it's a dunny bag, but I've just got uh, tools in there, right just bits and pieces. So that's the small tool kit. This is the recovery gear bag. Right so I've got uh, two winch extension straps, tree trunk protector, a snatch strap, heaps of gear. If we're going full driving and we're using some of that, what I can then do is chuck some of that into the rear canvas jerry can bag. So it's, it's easy to get out and like a snatch strap, you can just chuck it in there if it's muddy. All right, so that's the recovery gear bag. That's uh, another dunny bag. We've just sprayed a cross on it. Um, apparently you're not allowed to use a red cross. I don't know, but that's just mine. But we, we might uh, make that a different colored cross. Uh, this is used as a first aid kit. All right, so I've got plenty of room and all my gear in there. That's in there all the time. Another dunny bag, which this one, there you go, used as a dunny bag. Got a little shovel and a bit of, um, bit of bog roll. This one here is a sh our shoulder bag. I've taken the straps off it and it's just got a bit of, you know, the jumper leads. They're always good to carry. That's a nice size bag for those sort of things. What else have we got? Uh, 300 by 300 bag. It's got um, all our UHF radios in it, so a nice soft bag for that. This is our stove bag. So our single burner gas stove bag. So you can see I've got my airlines and a couple of air gauges. That's my bag for air. What else? This is a gas can bag. Got a little G there for gas. And I swim there, I've got um, a little burner, some gas cans, and that's all that in there. It's our LED light strip. These are great. The dual color light strip. We use that all the time. Got the dimmer switch. We've, this is the, what, the modified one with the Anderson plug, which works really good. So that fits perfect in there. Uh, this is a large sand stake kit, which is sort of what you need for if you've got the rapid wing awning. So I've got my large sand stakes. Uh, Tana Boy, that's, a, that's their bag, so it comes in that. It's nice. This is our um, peg kit. Okay, I've got a few extra ones, some, some small sand stakes in there. 
Uh, they're good if you're using the Oz tent or uh, you know smaller tents on the beach. Some nice uh, snow peak stakes. What else? Yeah, axe. So that's a, that's a lighter that you can use inside the Oz tent. Oh, I've got another one here. So, oh, this is my leather. So, of course, done a lot of plating over the years, and that's my leather bag. It's actually really good uh, for you know just repairs. This leather thong is so strong, and uh, you can use it for you know stitching up, you know, a jacket or a hat or all sorts of things. Uh, very strong leather. That, that kangaroo hide is the strongest leather for its weight in the world, kangaroo skin. Got my speedy stitcher, some D-rings, and if I get a bit bored somewhere, I can, you know, make a belt or do some repairs. I carry that always. And, of course, the old army sock with your plastic bags. Don't need to make a bag for that because you can't beat that. Righto. On my fridge, we've got our new drifter fridge straps. Okay, the good thing about our fridge straps, you know, you can get it with the double sided Velcro. You know, a lot of fridge straps are just going to be like that, with your off cut there, you know, dangling around. Um, this double sided Velcro is so good. Oh, yeah, you can cut it really easily, it won't fray. And it's on our website, so you can buy it by the meter on the website. And it's worth getting, you know, a meter or two, it's not expensive. And look at that, so that's nice. There are new drifter fridge straps. In the back of my car back, so this is our single drawer car back kitchen. It of course can come out, um, set up outside as a little kitchen. Um, inside, it's got a gear, yeah, salt and pepper shakers, yeah, snow peak mugs, um, you know, your spray oil for cooking, your flip grips, these things are brilliant. You know, we can't go anywhere without those. Paper towel, now, in here I've got a plate set bag, okay. the stacking mug set fits in there as well which is quite nice, so that's the plate set bag. I've got a percolator bag, this is a small Lander Black cook set, and of course the chopboard. These little chopboard bags are really nice. Now they used to just be sitting there like that, it can rattle and things can mark it, so you know uh, we're selling heaps of these little chopboard bags now, it just makes such a nice little set. You can see that when there's all, all that's packed in there, okay percolator fits nicely there. You know nothing can rattle, see that there? It's all sort of protected so it can't rattle around against each other and that's why this boot liner material is so good. Right, eh? so what we'll do is jump up top and I'll show you how some of the straps work on the roof. Righto, it's so up the front here, straight away you can see the Max Trax in our new Max Trax bag. Okay, so this is really nice. Two in here at the moment, but that'll fit four Max Trax, no worries. Okay, we've got a boot lined here to give it a bit of extra protection against those plastic lugs. I've had the Max Trax on here a long time without the bag, but you know, you're in the high country and you get muddle over them, or you get sand, wet sand on them at the beach, and where you've got to put them, back on top of your roof. And the last thing you want to be doing is, you know, I remember in the high country we'd have mud just dripping on the windscreen all the time. Um, you get sand dropped down into your tracks here, and it's just, you, don't, you just don't want to have that happening. So you mightn't think you need a bag, but for those reasons it, it is really nice. Plus it sort of protects them and covers them. People can't see what they are, and just looks really nice, particularly in the camo bag on top. Now, with the strap here, you can see what I've done is I've looped this around twice, okay? So if you find the straps are a little bit long, you can just loop that around twice. All right, that's on there like that. And then, there you go. So if you need to get your Max Trax off the roof in a hurry, that's all you gotta do, unclip them and clip them back on. Those straps are preset, so they're always gonna be exactly the right length. And that's why these straps are really handy, particularly when you've got something that's gonna be the same all the time. Every time you put those Max Trax back on, that's just gonna fit nicely. Right, with the, um, the larger straps, okay that's these ones here, which is the 2 meter 38 mil plastic buckle roof rack straps. Okay, these are long enough to go from here to here, you know, about this high with still a little bit left over. So that's how I've made the length. If you find they're a little bit too long, you know, we're just going halfway here, you can just cut them off a little bit. 
So we've made them just a little bit uh, with the wider material and the larger buckle, like that. Two bunkers and an equipment bag with our walls for the Oz tent. I can clip it on there nicely. If I want to adjust those straps, I still can. Okay, and you can see also the, the leftover strap we can roll neatly up um, because that's the thing you don't want flapping around. This double-sided Velcro is so good. Okay, I've got a bit here. You know, it's good to have half a metre just left over in your truck that you can use for things. And the good thing about it too is if, it's, if you've got a piece that's too short, you just overlap it by about an inch and it just joins together. So it's great for this sort of, you know, keeping your straps nice and neat. And uh, now that can still move up and down to adjust for adjustment and it'll keep it nice and tight. Alright, so that's those there. Same style. Again, you can see how easy that is to hook them on. Okay, loop it through. Same on the other end. And then, there it is done up. No worries. Now, these are a good quality Australian made buckle. Okay. You know, they're not going to be as strong as a ratchet strap, so for lighter things, something like this, it's not going to move around. I think these straps are going to be fine. Over here with the Oz tent, we've got exactly the same type of strap as on the Max Tracks, but we've just made it a little bit longer. Okay. So loop it around there. You can either loop it around this bar here or down the bottom. Okay, and there it is there. Nice and tight, nice and secure, very neat. Um, and it's easy to use. Again, this is going to go on every time in the same place and every time it's going to be pretty much the same you know, diameter, so you can just clip that back in. No worries. So these ones here, you know, we'll put on the web that they'll suit the Oz tent, but they're a loop strap plastic buckle, uh, 300, 1200. So this piece here is 300 and this piece is 1200. If you wanted to, you can get this in the metal buckle. This is a 25 mil width and we'll be offering that with the plastic clip or also the metal buckle. I'll show you a couple of things as well just while we're here. The other way you can do that is with these ratchet straps of course. All right. Now this is really overkill for a light sort of package like this where it's you know the same diameter each time and you know it just it's just not really needed to be that high. These are awkward as well. The problem with them as well though is if you're strapping down something soft like a swag radio, where you know over time the swag for example can condense and your strap can now come loose if that comes loose okay it's just going to come off and that's one of the big problems with strapping down light loads with a strap like this it's just too easy for this for this buckle to slip off and then once it slips off your load's not tied down at all the other problem as well of course is what to do with this excess you see these flapping around a lot from vehicles and trailers. I'll show you how to deal with that. Now this is a fairly cheap strap I bought and I basically don't use it anymore but I'll just sort of show you. It's a very thin material and they're no good at all. So if you're going to buy a strap just make sure you get a good quality one. Okay? What you're looking for is a nice thick material on the strap. Okay? That's the other problem with these. I mean, they're so frustrating because they just get hooked up and caught everywhere. Trying to sort these straps out, you know, is a real pain. All right, but you see this one here. Okay, it's a nice thick strap. That works really good. Now, there's only one thing to do with the excess, and this is how you do it. So, you just form a small loop like that, and you just roll it up. A lot of you probably already know this, but I've seen a lot of people driving around and uh, the straps are just a bit of a mess. And you know, somebody taught me how to do this. This is what the truckies do with all the big straps. Um, you know, I learned when I was, you know, we spent two years driving to Brisbane up and back in the truck, uh, bringing all that dot gear down. This is how all the truckies do it. Made a nice tight loop, okay? Once you're about that far away, you just push that part through there and then loop it over the top, just like that, and pull it tight, okay? Right, I'll show you again. About that far away. Just push him through, loop it around, okay, pull it nice and tight. The trick is, is to not do it up too tight, okay, so leave a little bit slightly loose. Once you've done it up like this, you can push the strap underneath there like that, 
and then you just do it up the last little bit. And that's a nice secure way, you know, that that strap is holding that excess down. If it does happen to come out, it's not going to blow undone, okay? So again, what you do, just a little bit loose, tuck him under, get that strap nice and straight, and just finish it off like that. Now again, that's more so for, for larger, heavier loads, and so, something like this strap for, for an Oz tent, uh, for some bunkers, it's just really overkill, it's a lot more awkward, a lot more difficult, and you've got the risk of these straps coming undone. With this type of loop strap, you never have the risk of that coming undone and loosening up. And of course, it's so much easier every time just to undo them. Okay, so there's some of our new products from our Drifter factory. You know, it's only just been finished and, you know, we're making so much product. The girls are working so hard. It's great to be able to, you know, have, have an industry like, you know, the canvas sewing industry that we can make here in Australia, which traditionally has gone overseas. So it's really exciting to be able to build that business up and the girls are doing an awesome job. They take a lot of pride in their work. It's all good quality materials. All of the canvas is Australian canvas, which is the best quality canvas in the world, okay, and made right here in Gloucester. So um, it's all on our website. Ha jump on there and have a look if you like and uh, no worries. Thanks very much.